For sure. Uh, so I found the Flurf uh, meme coin. I'm good on the charts there. And I'm just trying to pull up the NFT floor and act activity so I can check that out. And um, I'm on Bird's Eye right now, or Bird Eye. Yeah. Check uh, the best place to go is the launch my NFT.io. And that's where we generated them. So that's the home base for where we, we, we held our creation. Um, so launch my NFT.io. And then if you use the search function um, and just type in the words flat earth, um, it'll, it'll be the only thing that pulls up. And you'll notice it's the pink Space Boy NFT. It's very, uh, very noticeable. That is, uh, that is, uh, yep. And, and there you can see um, what's been minted so far, where the floor price is. I don't know where it is today. I think yesterday was that one saw, but um, I don't know where it is today. But um, yeah, that's where that's where you go. All right. So I found it. So I'm seeing 212 holders out of a 10k project, and we're looking at trying to find the floor. I'm sorry. Um, so funny can you just tell me where the floor is do you mind or do you happen to know it sh it should just automatically tell you you should see um if, if this is a if it's not what i would do <clears throat> is click on the magic eden icon yep. uh, on that web page and just let it take you to magic eden roger, they do roger. a better job at surfacing the floor hey there we go 0.42 awesome there we go there you go there we go Heck oh, yeah. thank you thank you y yes sir so All right, Casey, take care of that for me and I'll, uh, whatever to you. So wait, I got more questions. Give them to for us. It. Give them to us. This is awesome. All Let's right. Go. So I'm looking at, uh, this project is about a month old. Uh, we've got a market cap at 113,000, 19K liquidity. So far, that sounds right. Yes, that's correct. Awesome. And fully distributed is at 113 matching, which is good. And on the back to the NFT side, um, looking for the tokenomics on the NFT. Yeah, so they're 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 baked in as far as when you uh, you mint um, half fifty percent of it goes uh, back into the LP. Um, in the um, in the other half is burnt, so um, burnt off of, of not the max supply, but the tra the transaction. So is there any taxation we have, in there? Nope, zero. On, um, on, we're not, yeah, we're I'm not, so sorry, and this is specific to the NFT, not the coin. Yeah, yeah, no, we don't, we don't. There's a two point five percent royalty um, that we use for the marketing budget that goes into a marketing wallet. It's rather small right now. Yep. Um, the most we've spent thus far is about three hundred USD in value. Um, to get a proper deck screener listing. Um, and we wanted to let it just marinate for a little bit, let some organic growth happen, and then uh, let's see what the markets do so that we can kind of plan ahead for what we want to do with the marketing budget. Right now, there's, it's, still, it's still small, but you know, we've, we've minted some. And so um, we're going to leverage that for other things. But yeah, it's a 2.5% royalty. Um, Initially, there's no secondary royalties. There's no backside, um, you know, hidden royalties. It's just it's pretty much in the royalty side. You can see the rules on uh, launchmynft.io. Explain that on Mint. So if you go to click Mint, it automatically tells you it's a 2.5 percent royalty, um, and that's the initial royalty fee. Um, so you could consider that a tax, if you will, um, and that's purely to go into uh, community development. That's not going into anybody's pocket other than lifting of the community, whatever the community needs. We don't, we don't have any interest in, so I'm a, in taking I'm a, that money. I'm a fan of the, the taxable tokenomics. It, it makes, yeah. it makes so much, you got to have some revenue. Yeah. Know? So the 2.5 is, is small potatoes in, in contrast to what some, like some of these projects are doing on base coin, which are as high. I mean, they're pure tax farms. Um, you know, so we do have that going in, but what we figured initially was because we're, because because you flurf and everything's correlated to the market, what ends up happening is you don't have to mint a lot to end up generating a lot of revenue for the project, right? There just needs to be some price action. As we've seen, um, we are, I don't know how many X times up we are from our original V1 launch, but it came out at about 
5,000 and now it's sitting at about 120,000. So, you know, we're 50 times higher than we were from our very initial start. We're about five, seven, I don't know, 10 times um, our V2 launch. And so we, we wanted to be DGENs and ride the market with everyone else. And so instead of pulling money out of everyone's pocket and putting it at ours, we just said, listen, we're rising tides, raise all ships. So we're going to focus on community and we're going to focus on uh, building this, uh, this project up. And then there's going to be our revenue at that point. And then we don't have to sell off as much coin. We don't have to, to move as much stuff around because we'll end up getting that value right on the front end. So it's pretty interesting. You created kind of a, it sounds negative when I say this, but it's not meant negatively. You hey Mike, created, there goes a cool picture for you in the DM. You Ooh. created kind of a, a dead end alley for the liquidity. I even included the prompt yeah. you guys made. I'm, yeah, and you have you have to come down. I mean, you have to go through the path. I mean, we, we did change the contract for the NFT when we minted. It's an immutable deal. However, we have the ability to alter price. So if we want to run sales phases and do marketing promotions, we can. So do you that. revoked, but you're you revoked right. Everything but the price control. Yeah, on, just on the yep. NFTs, we revoked all control on the actual coin contract. So it is completely autonomous. Like it is up to the community. We can't go and do anything. Now we have ideas and plans to develop on the Solana blockchain, build contracts where you can leverage Flurf in there those are future plans we don't have anything flushed out there but we figured this is the way it would be best that we can do so we have an autonomous coin uh coin that no one no no dev controls um and if we want to build cool things with it on chain then we can build our own contracts that accept slurf much in the same way that we built the economy for minting the nft that's put cool. up, put up, put up, put up, put up. So, tuning in with kc kc live on location on a plane in Blender, Casey, for the uh, listeners in incognito, because I'm getting DMs, can you give your high level kind of 90 second, two minute or five minute kind of appraisal of what you've observed so far with regards to Flurf? Because I think people really like your explanations. I mean, you are teaching a course on fucking financial <laughs> literacy, right? So as someone teaching a course on fucking financial literacy, why are you even having this conversation in all seriousness? Well, uh, for, we're having the conversation because I'm interested in all things blockchain and all projects. And I like getting in and sourcing out what the to tokenomics are actually doing. Um, so I, I enjoy it is why I'm doing it. Um, tokenomics. I love it. <laughs> That's <Tolkenomics>. perfect. <laughs> if you're going to use a meme, might as well talk about the war, right? Uh, so, all right. My high level on this is that you have a, um, a fully released, meme coin meaning sorry the, explain that if you're yeah. explaining it to ruckus imagine you're oh, explaining to ruckus okay. so ruckus they launched a meme coin with no utility and they cut themselves out of the control of the meme coin so that no one person can screw with the system and then what they did was they initiated um a deflationary mechanism to the coin using nft purchases to deflate or burn yes, the total amount that. i so can imagine his eyes blazing over there so they started off with like what 90 million uh coins and through the process of buying the nfts they reduce the available amount of coins so they've crafted this as a burn mechanism that right. leaves you with an nft so i buy coin I give up coin and exchange it basically for an NFT. The value that I originally put into the coin is now more fully locked into. In, in comparison, Bitcoin does not have this feature. Would you say? Correct. That's correct. Also, I want to add that there is no return burn as other NFTs have. So if you actually hit the burn button on your NFT to smoke it, you know, kill it, you don't, you don't get the return on it. So, if you do burn it, it's it. It's gone. Like so, um, we do we do have the con the control to burn part of the entire NFT supply if we so choose to. Um, we wanted to put ten thousand together and see what the community does with it. We have confidence that we can mint all of them over time. 
um, the, the concern does come into, well, what happens when the market cap is at 10 million or 50 million? These things are going to be extraordinarily expensive to mint. And I'm like, well, the cool part about this is is they're correlated directly with the market price. So you can almost see the value of 50,000 flurf sitting in your FT, just like the value of 50,000 flurf sitting in a wallet. It's one in, it's one in one. So um, the economy carries over on either side. Now it does become expensive to mint and we, we were okay with that. Um, we said, we're going to just risk it for biscuit here and see where it goes. And again, we maintain the ability to leverage price control for sales phases if we ever want to do marketing promotions or let others get in or, or whatever. So we have that ability, which is just there for safety measure. Um, but, but ultimately, yeah, everything is a one-to-one -one connection. And if we burn, it's gone. There's no return. Which is good. It's frustrating to see that return burn happen. That's, that's pretty frustrating. Hey, we're going to deflate. Oh, we're inflating. That's, it's a kind of a, not fair, a little bit of a bait and switch. That's cool. So what happens is as the cash flow goes from USD to meme to NFT, it acts as a filter where that liquidity is getting locked into the system. So it's a method of locking liquidity for the future so you can not have as big a dump when people are looking to exit is okay. the, the, so, the utility. Exactly. It stables us off quite a bit. So the higher we get, you know, the, the, the less, less mover potential it has. And by baking it into the LP, we create a, a more, a much more stable environment than it being absolutely, you know, rampant like some of the other ones are. Um, you, you know, it's going to, it's going to, uh, it's not so much an anti whale thing as more as it, like you said, an anti dump. So, um, you know, if, if someone does want to, you know, offload a bunch with that high liquidity, it's not going to have nearly the price movement as, as it would right now. Like the price movements now are not even as strong as they were a week ago. Well, like, um, you could dump a hundred thousand flurf and move and move the, move the market 10%. But now you dump a hundred thousand flurf, you're not even going to move it barely 1%. So Casey, what are the four C's? If we were to look at cash flow, capital, collateral, and credit, mm -hmm. how yeah, would you I look at that? I gotta go do a couple things, uh, wake up right, and give her breakfast. I'll love it. Eh? It's good to talk I'll to you I'll catch up with you guys later. Have a great day. Crow, you are amazing. I'm so happy that I got to join the Discord, and I really hope you start coming around. And I'm serious about that flurf. I will be happy to give you a flurf because I think that you would be such a great member of the community to help educate because we need to know the stuff that you know, and you're just a, you're a gift, man. And I'm glad that I was able to get to know you today. Thank you so much, Geometry and Music. I understand now why everybody does what they do about Crow. Take care. So grateful for you. Yeah, thank you. You guys have a great day. That might have been the most civil conversation we've ever had with Crow. Congratulations, everyone. You've done he the was, impossible. He's so, he's, he's freaking, he's bomb, man. He's like ridiculous. <laughs> so Casey, yeah, we're the four C's of this project. Well, all right. So we'll kind of go in reverse order. So the credit, uh, by the way, I forgot to ask, how's your guys' telegram? Um, right now it's small. It's about a hundred and between 120, 140. Um, what we've done with the telegram is left the buy bot on in there for every single purchase, um, just to show the community there's some, there's some activity happening and it does make it harder to converse at times, but we were okay with that while we were small because our, our most ardent and supporters are in there watching it as well. And, uh, you know, Banksy and I have gone back and forth on it. I'm like, we, eventually we're going to have to increase this, uh, the buy uh, supply uh, trigger so that we're not getting, you know, constant notifications for 50 cent buys. And uh, as we grow, we're going to do that and start scaling because the buys will get bigger. And then we'll modify the actual output of the bot so that it's not so uh, in your face. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a small right now. Most of our activity has been uh, directly in spaces. X has come, come full circle for that. Um, and, uh, some of our private, uh, DM groups, but we are, we, we, we do have plans to scale, but we, you know, again, we didn't want to be such a community that pushes so hard that we get a bunch of just, uh, raunchiness in there and, and have to, you know, plus we don't have, uh, the kind of marketing budget or mod budget right now. So 
you know, we're trying to be lean as possible. And I, I was definitely given that dissertation. Sorry about that yesterday. Um, but uh, yeah, that's where we're at. I'll land there. So let me, let me run through these four C's real quick. Cause I'm, I'm echoing. So the credit is young, but good. And the bank C link helps with the good side of the credit in terms of street cred. Uh, but street credit, street yeah, credit. Yeah. Yes. So, so what do you mean by that? Like explain credit, because I think you, we've never talked about street cred, but I think that could be the credit in this market, because I, I believe this meme NFT to uh, token relationship is a, like a template for niche communities. But if I can understand it through this credit system, it'd be interesting. The credit so, of Web 2 is blank. The credit of Web 3 memes are. So it's kind of a German style credit reporting. Um, so it right. So in Germany, they report if you have anything bad and they assume <laughs> that everything else is good. It's so and German. So because you don't have a, a, a serial rugger as the founder um oh, okay so that's so, the cred right he yeah, hasn't burned his name exactly uh -huh. there's nothing which bad is rare to in this market exactly yeah, you know? it's, it's a very positive thing to say you can't find anything bad to say that's, <laughs> and, that's you probably good... looked, and you probably looked yeah so you know there's nothing bad to say which is a huge plus but it's young it's not doesn't have a lot of time under the belt. So it's fragile, but good credit is the way I would des describe that. How would a lender look at Banksy? Passing, as far as a just credit, it would be a passing grade on credit. Passing grade because of the credibility and what that means in this market, the street credibility. Uh, yeah, because of the lack of bad credit, but right. you Sometimes probably... The absence of errors is perfection in a lot of ways in this market. But you bet because it's young, you would want to have a compensating factor to it being young. Because you don't have monthly recurring revenue that someone can discount future cash flows there's and just, make evaluation. There's just, not, there's just not enough time to determine future credit worthiness. You can't say, well, they've got a 12-year history. They're going right. to keep that going. So it's young. It's not bad. It's just young. Previous behaviors indicate future performance as much as your financial advisor might tell you. Don't look at previous behaviors. And so yes. while the street credit is good and while the credit of the founder is good and founders are good, um, as far as uh, we can tell so far, right? Um, if anyone wants to spice the space up by complaining about the founders, you're welcome. There's a, you can co-host if you want. Um, okay, so we have the street credibility. How do you think so about collateral? I was just about to say collateral is up next and it's kind of a similar situation. There's not a lot of um, material value necessarily yet, but there's okay. also no debt. So oh, small. There's no offsetting of the capital. It's a, good, uh, collateral. It, it, yeah. it's a good ratio. It's just small. Is there any way that the organization could take on debt? Unilaterally, always, always. There's always ways to take on debt, but you don't want really? to do that. Okay, yeah. so so let's put on our black hat. How would the founders oh. take on debt? Oh, geez, man, this is Web three. There's an infinite number of ways to sell your soul. An example, maybe in history of uh, NFT founders you could go, taking on you debt. Could, you could you could go to another project and ask them to do a buyout. Where they cross the communities and by get the way, communities death started to laughing to give you some concept of your answer. You know, when death starts laughing, you really hit the nail on the head. Can you explain that more fully? <laughs> <laughs> how, how would because what we're talking about is anticipating how this might be rugged. Fair enough, right? Sure. And sure. where humans are involved, that's always a non-zero probability. Let's say. So let's say somebody took their NFT collection and actually put a leverage loan on it. That would be one okay. way to... Like how they did with Luna internally, where they... Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, internal leverage. You can sell rights to the projects. You can take on partnerships, quote unquote. Okay, uh, so Citadel up. buying up the rest could sure. be disadvantageous. Or... Uh -huh. or, or you could also 
reputationally leverage yourself by onboarding influencers to do the work. Oh, so you can affect your street credibility by the influencers you on board. That's fascinating. Yeah, but I have I have a bone to pick with that statement because like I worked with a lot of influencers. I mean, seriously, on Clubhouse, is anybody here that I know from them? But listen, we worked with a whole bunch of influencers, and they don't do they don't do jack because they, it's very hard for them to understand the technology. The best influencers that you have are people that are going to be in the ecosystem that have big followings, such as artists. We need to go after the big artists with the big following because their communities are just like our community heavy deep connected there's trust always built there there's trust always influencers are just the that's exactly what it is it's all puff so unless they have the education and the acumen to translate this information they're just good that's all it's going to be it's going to be like they're just posting a new they're just having a new sponsorship they're just doing another thing they're not going to be able to translate and we need people to be able to translate this 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 world and we need people to know what they're doing and want to actually see the scalability versus just get the bags so i totally agree with you we're, we're just pointing out ways that some projects take on debt in order to get the capital to make it to the next step. And because Flurf is running very lean and doesn't have the tech debt and they don't have a huge collateral value, the ratio of value to debt is very good. It's just small. And and that that's all. So that's, that's just the analysis of the collateral. And then capital is next. And the, the Flurf coin is actually kind of in a little bit of a sweet spot at the 18k liquidity range the fact that it's a month in is not horrible but you'd prefer to see that 18k in the first sweet spot what did you use to calculate the uh emotion of sweet spot so when you're when you're trying to get into a meme coin you don't want to get in at the top and get dumped on and it's very challenging. Right. <laughs> very, and it's very challenging. It sounds like so, the most obvious way to start a tutorial ever. When engaging in meme coin investing, you do not want to get dumped on. Yeah. Continue. So when you look at meme coin uh, market metrics, when you enter into the like, I don't know, somewhere around ten to twenty thousand in that range of liquidity, people start noticing. And what they're looking for is that early in where what coin has a low enough amount of liquidity that tells me I'm really early, but it's still enough liquidity to make me feel like they're um, actually going to do something. Right. right. So now you're trying to find the leading indicators, let's say. Yeah, that's exactly right. right. And, and the, the, the capital in this scenario also speaks to you know, management of funds, et cetera. But their their system's pretty straightforward and simple. So you're looking at the time frame now to judge the capital. And you typically want to see like within the first week, you're at 18 and then you have that explosive growth. But because they ran it really lean and didn't dump all their money into the marketing and go for that, crazy make it or break it power push at the beginning it's a good it, it's a good metrics for the liquidity and time frame and if okay. they can you know so it's a good start so let's let's review so what we're talking about right now you just joined us is you're listening to kc who literally has a product around financial literacy for people who want to buy homes improve credit and is using visualizations to depict your financial position like the uh Warren Buffett of Dorian Gray. What we're talking about is the force looking at Flurf as an ecosystem through the four C's of capital. Uh, also, Casey has an art competition where it's about 800 bucks up for grabs, but we'll talk about that soon. Now, if you can review Casey for the new people and for the incognitos that don't want to be seen associating with people like us, um, can you walk them through why? over one billion dollars of loans sold you landed on the four c's and then move into how you use it for uh people buying houses and then let's c continue the metaphor extended analogy into this sure so 
Um, over the course of two decades, I cleared over a billion dollars in mortgages closed, and my loans were small. They were not the one, two, three, five million dollar mortgages. I, I helped a lot of the little people. And running through that many scenarios, analyzing the credit, the debt ratio, the collateral and capital, I started utilizing those four C's on every situation. And my, my, my own personal to everybody else's, to businesses, to product, you can always boil down the metrics into the four C's and get a pretty, pretty quick, clean look at the health of what you're, the scenario you're looking at. And so here today, I'm just running through the four C's on the Flurf project. It took me a minute to, to conceptually see the cash flow, which is the last component to review. Um, but, and that's, that's, that's why and how I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing. I don't know if that answers the question you were looking for. Yeah, so can you review how you would use the four C's uh, traditionally in loan origination and hmm. per, you know family financing and then tr transition into explaining it here? Give people a, a ground sure. base. Sure, so uh, for lending, you would start off with looking for limiting factors like low credit, um, low capital for down payment. Then you move into the debt ratio uh, to make sure that you're not over lending. And then you look at the capital of the property to make sure that it's a sound place to attach money to. So by using those four, uh, again, you're just boiling down a ton of data to, to get a clean picture. So for Flurf, we identified that they've got young but good credit. They've got low collateral value, but very, very low debt. So that ratio still looks pretty good. The capital for the time frame and the, the lack of debt is actually in a pretty good sweet spot. It's, it's a little long on the tooth on, on the clock, but it is, it's still definitely in the sweet spot. Um, the, cash flow is next and the path that is laid out on the cash flow like I was saying earlier if I was gonna if I was gonna criticize this there is a little bit of a not a liquidity trap because there is an exit but it definitely bottlenecks the money coming in and makes it harder to exit and so because there's a process to the cash flow from mean coin to NFT to secondary, the, the exit proposition for a consumer is that you're investing in the project longer term to see this through because you really want to be here and you believe in the mission statement versus I'm going to degen into this, watch the charts, and in two hours, I'm going to make my 10x and exit. And so under the right expectations, that cash flow works well. And separating the cash flow to run a deflationary mechanism on the token, while at the same time only taking a small portion of the effective NFT tax to supplement the marketing is a... a Morally, it is a wonderful offer and a gesture. My criticism is that it won't, or my concern, not criticism, but a potential concern is that the cash flow won't be enough to sustain the ecosystem and you might have to add in supplemental sources of income, which you've been talking about potential merchandising and metaverse and, and, and. So, depending on what you guys do with the liquidity that's locked, whether you start up a Solana node and start servicing the chain with fee structures going back to marketing as an alternative to locking or, or whatever you do, my, my feeling right now is that you're going to need an increase to the cash flow. But thankfully, because you've run it so lean, 
it shouldn't take a whole lot to overcome that effective debt ratio. And when you think about the uh, what funding gets spent on early for projects, it's in buying users through the cost of customer acquisition. And if they can keep that low, then like you said, even though the numbers might be low, as long as they're keeping their burn, they can get enough speed to get off that runway. And if they're not taking on debt, even if you're not making a million dollars, you're still richer than a lot of hundred millionaires that are being, you know, uh, a necktie is simply an inverted noose. And if one is not careful, a man will hang himself with it. <laughs> yep. And then, and that's also where like sacred kicks in with the community resources, because it only takes one DGEN developer or one artist that's really vibing hard or one marketing specialist. Okay. So before yeah. you go into that, let, so we've talked about the rosy picture. Let's talk about the dark, the sinister picture. How might we fail? How might this fail? Walk me through the uh, black hat scenario analysis of how you've seen other things break down, like Citadel buying up the supply, leveraging it and wiping everyone out. And now Doak Wan's in jail. This is where so, we all need to take out our notepads. I have to so, take a phone call. Uh, I, I really don't want to because I'm just this is an interesting conversation. But I mean, fuck it, I gotta go. Fuck, I gotta go do business. I hate it. I'm working again. Fuck we'll, you all. We'll, 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 we'll give you the rundown later, Dan. It's recorded. You're good, buddy. You're good. Dan, do we will, will you get like the flirt team on a podcast? Let's go. So one thing I haven't done is grab the bubble wallet and look at the wallet distribution. It's not like there's a ton of wallets, but I still don't know if there's, you know, a couple wallets that are actually tied into a single person. Sorry, do you, what do you mean by wallet distribution? Now we're talking about how might this either fail or be attacked? Yeah. So either from is, inside yeah. or outside. They say most attacks happen from inside the room. Most people that hack into companies are people, you know, disgruntled employees, things like that. You know, we do live in a human place, a Machiavellian place. Go ahead, Casey. So if I wanted to sabotage your project or if I wanted to just like rug the project, even as an outsider, a random person, you don't even have to be inside. I could spin up, say, 10 wallets and I could load those 10 wallets with as much as I could and make it look like, Oh, that's 10 different people really buying it up. So from the inside, I could use that as a marketing ploy to say like, Oh my gosh, everybody we're getting swept. Oh my gosh, look and drive fake hype. Um, but more the dangerous side is that that allows one person to dump. And so you have, the potential for a market maker situation where they're driving the market of the value of the coin. So what you're saying is more money, more problems, more general. Uh, more money to one person, more problems. The, the more money that's accumulated, the more that a centralized player will try to Sybil attack using a short and run strategy of accumulation and then pumping and dumping like they do with Tether and Bitcoin. You got it. That's like spot on. So the only other real criticism potentially is on the NFT side because there's a very slow exit until the secondary market picks up. So your liquidity is kind of trapped in the NFT until secondary picks up, provided that that's, you know, you want to exit. So they're at kind of a breaking point where they'll need the secondary sales on the NFT to be present to provide that final exit path for people. And right now that's not like, so, so that's the know. final part of the flywheel is when the secondary market, what is the secondary market? And now that we're doing, uh, what is this DGEN financial literacy? <laughs> <laughs> so when I, when I buy an NFT, that is a primary sale. I have minted a brand new NFT. It is mine. I have made this NFT come into existence. When I sell that NFT to somebody else, that is a secondary sale. So you have primary and secondary. And it is the secondary sales. You that think are, that is going to be maybe the t determinant of what happens in the next phase of this 
the secondary market and the velocity of that? It, it'd probably be like third phase, but yeah. Gotcha. Uh, is there a way for you to recap uh, the four C's for all the new listeners? You've you've attracted quite the crowd. <laughs> sure. So on any scenario, whether it's your own personal scenario. Oh, sorry, introduce yourself, Casey. Why should they oh. even listen to you? Just oh, because yeah. you have a, hey. because you're, have a Caucasian voice. Oh, I'm going to listen to Casey <laughs> now. Go ahead. So my name is Casey, and I am in New Hampshire. I'm fully doxxed through my LinkedIn. Feel free. Um, I spent 23 years in the mortgage industry, and I spent the last eight years of that as a research and development specialist and a risk control agent working with nonprofits, uh, housing counseling agencies that are focused on financial literacy and uh, basically getting people off the streets and trying to solve our local homeless issues. And they do that through counseling and uh, coursework. So I came in and um, worked with their counselors and trained them up on how to deal with the general public and how to assess, uh, assess scenarios and how to use the four C's for any scenario to determine fact from fiction. Because most people feel a certain way about their finances and they can't see the facts. So the job is to show the facts of the situation and then deal with the facts versus the emotions that lead up to some of the facts being true. And that's that's where I come from. All right, so give us the high level overview. You, we, you gave us the 20 minute, now give us the, <laughs> now give us the 90 second. What so is your assessment? You can, you can sift out all the BS when you look at cash flow, money in versus money out, capital, money saved, collateral, value of the thing versus cost of the thing, and credit reputation. If you boil all scenarios down to those four, you will get a very clear picture every time. So that's why I, that's what I do. And so tell us about the four C's as it relates to um, flip, just in like 60 seconds. What do you see? Sure. So credit is young, but good. Uh, collateral is um, in a sweet spot, low, but but good, given the time frame. Um, the collateral. Sorry, I'm going to interrupt you. There's a better way to do it. We're yeah. going to use your idea of visualization. So if you were going to design an image prompt for the current state of Flurf, given the four C's, what would the image prompt be? Mm. Mm. That's a good one. <laughs> like that's, that? a, that's a good one. This is your project. Yeah. So on the fly imagination, here we go. Uh, so... I think for the cash flow, I typically represent that as a weapon because you're cutting through and battling your debt. And the weapons here are a little small. They're sharp, but they're small. So like a sigh from like Raphael. Maybe, maybe something like, yeah, like a little sigh. Yeah, that would, that would be, that'd be a pretty okay. good one. Or, you know, so like dirt. Hurdles, okay. You know, so we have the sigh um, in the hand, yeah. Right. Um, the capital... It represents the armor and your ability to withstand costs. Mm -hmm. And I would say that their armor is probably kind of like a, a leather armor right now. Okay. It's not, you know, so but it's, it's still like a teenage ninja turtle so far. Keep going. But but it's a very polished leather. You know, okay. there's been, okay, so there's right? subspace refraction on the blender. I get it. Yeah, the you metallic got it. You got and it. roughness is all the way down. Uh huh. Keep going. So the credit. Uh, in my 3D avatars is represented as an aura. You have an aura okay. surrounding you. And the aura here is um, big, but it's a little translucent. You know, it's it's good, but it's not very old. So, uh -huh. right? So it's a little, it's a little, it's a what little. What color would the aura be for you? For, for my personal? 
for you personal, just as you as a person, a human being. Oh, what color man. Oh, dude, I got the colors of the rainbow. It's bright. It's loud. <laughs> it's okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You know, That's more the it's spirit been, of the it's brand. Been, yeah. It's been dark and meager. It's been barely there. It's been winked out of existence at points, but it is strong today. Um, so that would be the the credit aura. And then, um, so we got cash flow capital. So the collateral represents usually, I uh, usually represent that as the helm. And I would say this project. Sorry, what's right a helm? Now, I'm a, a helm. A helm. Uh, helmet. I don't, helmet. A helm. I don't understand here. Civil War <laughs> reenactment <laughs> fiction. Oh, you, you know the helm with the scabbard. Oh no, actually, actually, Punjabis have swords. I should know that. Your but, your, yeah. your your battle hat. Okay. Okay, that's what a helm is. <laughs> in my battle hat. So uh, this is a figure, a warrior with a sai in his hand leather shiny uh armor keep okay. going a a a wonderfully colored but transparent aura and a sturdy but small <clears throat> small cap on the head what would you look at short term um from a data perspective that would significantly change what this avatar looks like and how the avatar is adorned in a cash flow first and what I, tool I, would you use is this like black decks i don't know what your fucking kids do <laughs> <Duke's dudes? laughs> Flux? what the fuck do you guys use to look at this fucking shit fuck fucks what is it well, called here, 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 here. So right. here's, the, here's the thing this is what makes it so challenging so when you're trying to launch a project and manage the finances behind it, okay. your your credit impacts your debt ratio, your debt ratio impacts your capital, your capital ability impacts your collateral. It's all tied together. Mm -hmm. And so I I feel like the if I was ever gonna So it's like combining advice, a personality is what you're saying. So yes, all these things give us give a project personality. And different personalities yeah. attract different buyers, let's say. Some people like street credibility. Some people like liquidity. Just depends. And what would, let me ask you this. What metrics do the secondary market largely look at when they look at young projects? Overall volume, strength and size of the community. The, the community plays a huge part. That's where you get into a lot of the meme coins that are just for rothing over the fact that the artists are actually picking up meme coins because they're not artists. They are degen meme buyers, meme coin buyers, and they don't have the artistic skills to make memes like that, but they're trying their damnedest. And if the artists join in and start banging out meme art that's high quality, that content is such a huge lift to their community and they're desperate and dying for it. And God bless them, they're trying so hard. But this is where you get the communities where everyone's getting the notice. We gotta read this post, read this fucking post, go, 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 show them we're strong. That is part of the lifeblood. And that's the credit street cred that allows you to grow that cash flow. So, like, you gotta work for all of it, but. I would say the thing, the metric that'll make the biggest change could be any one of the four. So right. I would say it's based on opportunity. So your ability if, to judge the market series, your ability to read the four C's and apply them using the tools like Stick Sticks and Duck Ducks and all these other yes. data platforms where you find information on real time markets. I'm going to start stop talking now. Thank you for your service, Casey. That was epic, Casey. Casey, that was so epic. Like, seriously, that was freaking amazing.